what's the relationship between what we see, what we feel, what we hear and what's there? Is it the same for everybody? What, where do colours exist? Do they exist in the world, in the mind, or, or not at all? What can visual hallucinations teach us about how our minds work? I'm here at the Dream Machine Experience in London to find out how music, science and philosophy can come together to reveal how we perceive the world. All that's happening in the Dream Machine is a white light going on and off, but the experiences that people are reporting and how emotionally affecting they are, how joyous they are, is really profound um, realisation that, you know, what you're capable of and that we have this incredible, incredible organ. How was your experience? Did you enjoy it? Yeah, that was really relaxing actually. I saw a lot of reds and whites and square shapes, circle shapes, and then, and then it moved on to sort of seeing the full spectrum of like greens, blues and yellows. It's in your mind and you're in complete control of the experience. Your brain creates all these shapes, patterns and colours. Professor Anil Seth and his team at the University of Sussex, they'd actually been experimenting with and exploring the phenomena of um, flickering light for like the last decade and still trying to research, you know, why this happens and what underlies it. So they were like a crucial bit of the jigsaw. Culturally, the phenomenon goes back probably hundreds, thousands of years uh, to cult people sitting around the campfire looking into sparks of the flames and, and having sorts of experiences. But in, in neuroscience in the 1950s, William Gray Walter describes this phenomenon of strobe light on, on, on closed eyes. And he also suggests that the, the reason for the phenomenon is that the strobe light is entraining sort of imposing a beat on some of the brain's natural rhythms, especially when your eyes are closed. So many people have described this as a sort of resting state of the visual brain, and it's associated with relaxation. What do you think the dream machine can teach us about how our minds work and how we work as humans in general? One thing we think is going on, uh, along with others who study this, is that the aspects of the visual wiring of the brain, like the, the underlying anatomy, seems to be revealing itself in the experience. The, the, the shapes, the lines, the, the, the patterns of movement that, that you see can be tied to the underlying structure of the visual cortex. It can tell us a lot about the range of different experiences people can have. So we all have different perceptual experiences of a shared world. Now the dream machine, I think, just brings those differences to light in a, in a beautiful and creative way. The music actually seems to affect the images that people see, um, and everyone sees something different. This is all happening behind closed eyelids with white light, so it's it's quite fascinating and then I love the fact that it's not fully understood. A lot of ancient Neolithic sites have a strong sonic component and they, you know, the, the chambers in the, um, the Great Pyramid resonate on very specific notes and no one knows exactly why but there's, to me it seems like there's, there's some great healing power in there that we um, may, maybe need to rediscover. We're starting to understand the brain and the body more and how sound affects it and, and change the balance of hormones in the body. Um, reducing cortisol, you know, increasing serotonin, dopamine, like when you get tingles um, from music, like that's dopamine actually having you know, goosebumps and that sort of thing. You can create any sound you want these days, like it's possible to imagine something and then bring it into reality. So to combine that with something which um, gives your brain this opportunity to create something for you is, is pretty unusual. So in the dream machine, it's quite evident people have describably unique experiences. This recognition of diversity is, has potentially pretty significant consequences for how we operate in society. You know, we all sort of connect with each other on the basis of the assumption that we see the same world, but we don't necessarily always see the same world and understanding these differences.
can be a catalyst, I think, for, for better communication between people.